Hello everyone, how's everyone doing today? Uh, welcome to um, another tutorial in 3D Studio Max. Now, yes, I do realize I haven't had one in about um, what's it, like two years now, um, and um, I really do thank my loyal subscribers who have not unsubscribed from me because um, that's pretty amazing. I mean, thanks guys. Um, so, yeah, I am going to start doing more videos now. More videos are on the way. And, um, it's been two years, so technology has advanced. Behold, 3D Studio Max 2010, uh, 64-bit, so it's back one. Now, a few things. First of all, one, a few people asked what the specifications of my computer were. Um, back then, actually, when I did the first four tutorials, um, back in 2009, I had a laptop, which was running Core 2 Geo, I believe, at about 2.8 gigahertz. Um, I don't remember the details. It had a G it had an, an NVIDIA GDX um uh, 9200 I think GS and um and it also had 3 gigs of RAM. Now I'm currently on a desktop as you can see. Um well you can't really see actually. That that was a stupid statement. Um but Windows 7 Ultimate um and I was running Vista back in the day as well, sorry. Um Core 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 i5 750, it's a quad core, uh, 2.67 gigahertz, 4 gigs of RAM, it's, it is 64 bit, um, and um, uh, my graphics card is um, uh, um, a G, an, an NVIDIA GeForce GDX 260 with uh, 896 megabytes of RAM, and um, yes, that is. Um, that is my system. So, if you're wondering, you know, if your system's rendering faster than mine or slower than mine or whatever, now you know pretty much what computer I have, uh, so that you can sort of compare it with yourself or whatever. Okay, so let's get back into this now. Um, I had an, I had a few requests actually, um, four or five actually, to do a basic animation tutorial in 3D Studio Max, and um. So that's what I'm doing. Um, now, I, now I assume that you guys know your way around the interface. If you do not, please, please leave me a comment um, saying that you do not, and I, I, I would be more, more than happy to, uh, to help you guys out and to do a tutorial explaining the basic interface of 3D Studio Max. Um, and it, if, uh, on that matter, actually, if you have any other requests for tutorials, please let me know because um, I am sort of running out of idea, ideas here, and. Um, I've actually got a few, but uh, we're not going to talk about them now. But um, if you guys have any sort of request for a tutorial, how small or how large, please let me know. I would be more than welcome, more than happy uh, to actually do that for you. Now, what we're going to start by is just creating a plane here. And um, we're going to make it fairly large. Place it roughly in the middle here. And uh, we're going to name it Floor. Um, we're then going to actually. This is a bright green color, sort of hurting my eyes. Let's make it purplish. Um, let's make a box, and let's make a sphere, and uh, let's make the box uh, 50 by 50 by 50. It completely does not matter what the dimensions of the box are, honestly. But um, uh, I've heard that. It's now called a cube, actually, because it's the same on every side, and uh, and that that was the joke, actually. Um, it's always been called a cube. Um. <clears throat> anyway, whoa. Okay, let's scale this down uniformly. That is not uniformly. <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, I want to animate these two sort of crisscrossing. Um. So let's go over the animation interface. These things, this thing here is your timeline slider, or time slider, as you can see right here. Um, now you control how fast this moves. This is the play button. This plays the entire animation. You control if you if you, you okay. Let's just start with this. Um, if you go into the time configuration right over here, you can choose how fast it's played. Film is 24, PAL is 25 frames per second, and NTSC is 30 frames per second. My camera records at 23.976 uh, seconds, um, so usually I would use this. Um, now, length. This controls how long it is, okay? 
you can have it, well, there's no real limitation, I don't think. There probably is. Like, you can't, probably can't have it more than... Yeah, you can't have it more than, um... Well, you can have 20,000. I don't know what, I don't know what the limitation is. But 200 should be more than enough for us. And, um, so that's the length. That's the animation start time. You can make it 20, so it starts at 20 frames. That's, there's no real point unless you're actually integrating video into this. Uh, so we'll just set it to 200. Click OK. In fact, 100 is probably enough. Let's just set it to 80. <laughs> OK. Now, in terms of shortcuts, um, on your keyboard, there's a comma and a period or a full stop. OK. Uh, we, say, we say full stop in Australia. Americans say period. So, uh, yep. Now, pressing the comma will go left. Pressing the period or the full stop will go right. If you press the button to the right of the full stop, which is the question mark uh, or, and the forward slash, uh, it will actually play the animation. So that's a few hot keys for you guys. Um, let's get on to animating this. First of all, we're going to set it. We're going to go to frame zero here. And we're going to set it to where we want it to start. So we want the, the sphere to be here and we want the cube well, to be um, here. Okay? Now, auto key. Auto key. Um, Basically, just selects M. Sorry, N is the shortcut for audio key. N for um, more stuff for then. Come on, guys. N really? Um, I'm trying to think of a word of an object. Um, normal, normal. That's not really an object, but normal. N for normal. <coughs> normal. N uh, is the hotkey for autokey. And autokey basically um, puts you into animation mode. Um, we're going to select the sphere here, and we're going to hit the um, set keyframe button. We're going to go forward in time to about 40, and we're just going to we're just going to drag it over here. That's it. And uh, if we actually go back, as you can see, it magically moves, which is uh, really really cool. And uh, let's do the same for the cube. And uh, I was actually being um, sarcastic. It's not actually that cool. Um, well, I, I guess it is, but compared to you know other things that I've seen, this is and probably you've seen, this isn't that exciting. But it's it's still pretty awesome. I mean, come on, how often do you see that in real life? Not often. Uh, anyway, um, now what we want to do is okay. Well, we've got a few problems here. A um, problem A. Actually, there's only one problem here. Uh, there is, it's not a, at a constant velocity. It's sort of slow, then it speeds up, and then it sort of... It's like an easy ease curve in After Effects. It starts off slow, gets up to its speed, goes fast in the middle, and then it slows down to a stop. Uh, but we want it to go a constant speed. Okay, We don't want it to do this. We want it to be constant all the way through. How do you do that? First thing you need to do is open the open is open the mini, cu mini curve editor. By hitting by hitting um this button right over here, click it. It's gonna open the, open this now. Let's just make it larger. Let's just click and drag over here, just to make this a touch larger so that you guys can actually see more. And I can explain the interface a bit. Um, here is the close button, and uh, I'm pretty sure it does the same thing as this little button here. <laughs> um, that's very important. This button. Anyway, uh, back to back to this. I don't know why I even did that, but um, you know. It's pretty interesting, actually. You you need to know how to close it. I mean, what if you're trying to close it and you're like, what what do I do? Um, you hit this button right here. Um, next thing, okay, you got you got this little hand which uh, which moves this around. Um, you've got this thing which actually moves time. So if we just if we lower this, move this as you can see, these guys move. Let's select our sphere. And let's examine the animation path that it, that it has done. Now, on the horizontal or x axis, we have got the time. Um, and on the vertical or y axis, we've got the position. Um, um, the, yeah, yeah, it's not, yeah, it's the position. We've got, we've got the position here. Um, and so, as you can see, it's sort of, the time's advancing, but the position isn't really moving that much. Then it's going, the steeper it is, the faster the object moves. So let's click and drag and select the entire thing here. So we've got mainly these two selected. And let's go over here and hit the Set Tangents to Linear button. That's going to make it a completely straight line, which means it's a constant speed throughout the entire thing, okay? 
Let's uh, let's hit it close for a second. Um, let's hit play. As you can see, the sphere now no longer um, changes speed. It goes the exact same speed throughout the entire animation, which is perfect. This is this is what we want. Uh, now it's time to do the same thing for the cube. So let's uh, let's hit the let's open the, our mini curve editor again. And um, here it is. As you can see, it is. Um, it's not um, a straight line. Uh, we can actually also modify this. Um, if we click and drag here, we can make it go sort of like this. In which case, what will happen is it'll it'll start off really slow, then it'll suddenly jump forward. It'll, as you can see, it'll it'll suddenly move by like 300 units, and then it'll 300 units in like three frames, three to five frames, and then it will sort of smooth out. So if we just watch this. Whoa! <laughs> so that's uh, that's sort of what you can do with this, and uh, feel free to play around with this, and it's it's really good fun. Um, let's hit the set tangents linear button now. As you uh, will see in a second, completely awesome, completely and utterly awesome. Now, before we finish this epic animation, let's we can shut off auto key now. Um, as you can see, our animation only goes for 40 frames, so we can go into here, just to make it a bit more simplistic, and turn this down to 40, and um, there we go, okay, now it goes for 40 frames. Um, last thing we could do, just to add a bit of um, depth to it, is add a light, just a skylight, and uh, we'll set cast shadows to about 44, not 40, 4. Uh, is in the number four or five. Five is fine as well. Depends on your computer. This is just a rough thing. So yeah, if we render the single frame by hitting the render production or F9, as you can see, it looks nice. Um, um, by the way, the, the thing I'm pressing here is Alt W or this little thing here. That's making it bigger. Now we are running out of time here, um, but let's just let's drag this like this and this to here as well, and. Uh, it does not matter where this is because it's a skylight. Um, and if we actually just go into here, into the render setup, and let's just hit HD and 1080p, whatever you want, and render this. It looks really nice. Now, um, that's pretty much it, guys. That's how you animate things in 3D Studio Max. Uh, this is very, very simple. Um, I'm not going to go over rendering setup or anything of how to export these files. It's fairly self-explanatory. But uh, again, you guys, if you have any requests for any sort of tutorial um, on 3D Max, uh, please uh, drop a comment or send me a private message. Um, I don't know. Do anything. Just send me an email. Send me a private message or a comment, really. And uh, just tell me, you know, tell me what you guys want because um, uh, I'm more than welcome to actually more than happy to just to do it for you guys okay um thank you for watching and um i'll see you guys next time